So here we are, three years later. I'll tell you, it feels like only yesterday that Dragon Ball Fighters was announced. What was it? It was uh, E3 2017, I believe. We got that trailer. I'll never forget it. I remember I was watching the Xbox showcase. I'm not really like a big Xbox person. You can probably tell because it's the only console I don't own Dragon Ball Fighters on. But anyway, I remember watching the showcase, seeing it in action, seeing like the, it was like Freezer and Goku like clashing, and then some of the gameplay, and I was like, <laughs> And that was it. It was the beginning of something special. And then on January 26th, 2018, we were blessed with the release of Dragon Ball Fighters. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I played it at PAX in 2017. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had a great time. I'm pretty sure I played uh, Super Saiyan Goku, I played Cell. I, was, I wanted to play Hit, but he wasn't in the demo, I believe. So I think I played Adult Gohan? Question mark? But yeah, I knew it was love at first combo. But yeah, it's crazy to think that I've been playing this game since the beta. And I can't even remember when the beta was. It was probably a few months prior. So, I don't know, November, December, something like that. And now look where we are now. We are three seasons into this game. And oh boy, how it's grown. And it's kind of crazy because there's so much of this game that's like grown and progressed. Like the meta was very rigid early on and people were only using sparking as a defensive mechanism on their last character. But now everybody's learning TODs, everybody's getting more familiar with characters. We're at a point in the game where all the characters at a really good spot. Like, every character is borderline viable. And look, I get it, we have UI Goku, but there has to be some bullshit number one in every season. Season one, it was Bardock, season two, it was GT Goku, and now it's, it's Ultra Instinct Goku. It's gotta run in the family. It's canon, although, Bardock being the strongest isn't really canon, but GT Goku and Ultra Instinct Goku. It's canon, baby. You know what's also crazy? Dragon Ball Fighters was the fighting game that got me back into fighting games. I remember I used to play heaps of Smite. I actually used to stream Smite years and years ago. I remember hearing about Street Fighter V, and when Street Fighter V came out, we all know how that launch went. And I picked it up, and I was like, oh, this game's okay. Well, I played it here. Like, I, I tried to really get into Street Fighter V, but it didn't really hit the spot. You know? I mean, look, I still enjoy Street Fighter V, but it didn't capture my soul, you know? It didn't tickle me in all the right spots. You know what it did? Dragon Ball Fighters. Dragon Ball Fighters came out and I just... I was addicted. It is the first game I really sat down and tried to get good at. It's still a work in progress, okay? We're getting there. Trying to hit that one mil. What am I at now? 850,000? But there was just something special about this game that, like, really brought the fighting game lover out of me. And I've always really liked fighting games. Like, I've always really liked them, but I've just never really had the opportunity to play them or the motivation to really kind of go balls deep. And I was always a big fan of, like, Marvel vs. Capcom. So that whole 3v3 tag fighter system, like, really gelled with me. So when Dragon Ball Fighters came out and that's what they were going to do, oh, I was all in. And Dragon Ball Fighters is also the very first fighting game that actually made me travel to a local event. It's the game that really got me into the FGC. And then COVID hit. Fuck. But still, it's safe to say that Dragon Ball Fighters will always have a special place in my heart. And I've always been a really big fan of the Dragon Ball franchise. I love that shit. And I've always been familiar with Guilty Gear and Arc System Works and Blaz Blue. So I don't know. It was just like the perfect storm. It was a match made in heaven. And in all honesty, I probably wouldn't have restarted this YouTube channel. I wouldn't be making fighting game content if it wasn't for Dragon Ball Fighters and the influence that it had on me. And still has on me. And I talk about it on my podcast a lot. If you haven't checked it out, go follow a couple of NPCs. Dragon Ball Fighters is definitely in my top three favorite games of all time. It could possibly be number one. I'm like so in love with this game. We'll go top two favorite games of all time. Dragon Ball Fighters, Chrono Trigger. That's right. To me, this game is in the same league as Chrono Trigger, which is ironically also a Kira Toriyama art. What can I say? He knows what I like. I'm not actually sure if I said it at the beginning of the video, but happy birthday to Dragon Ball Fighters! Thank you Arc System Works and all the devs who worked on it for making a game that really brought out the passion in me. And I look forward to Season 4, and 5, and 6, and the inevitable Dragon Ball Fighters 2. But anyway, let me know how Dragon Ball Fighters has affected your life. Let's share some stories. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe for some more fight game goodness. Make sure to follow my gaming podcast and stream a couple of NPCs. We stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I will catch you for the next video.